So let's take a look at subdivision modeling. So go into the primitive shapes and in here if we just start off with the basic one we just ask for the subdivision object and click it into the scene and at a very basic level that would give us a cube and then with the blue button we have a look here and we've got subdivision iterations face restricted which I haven't played with too much yet so I assume it will restrict it when it's locked but again I haven't played with that one much yet low poly won't matter yet but it will obviously be when it's subdivided it'll show it low poly and mirrored which is the important one so what we'll do is we'll pull this out and leave it there for a moment so mirrored obviously it's mirrored um, uh, x and across x so if you pull the points together and, and then pull them to zero on x as I'm doing now what you'll see is that they snap together and then from that point they're locked to the x-axis which means that if I'm going to start modeling it's the best way to have a, a, a beginning model which means that you can't now pull out across this edge uh, and destroy what you've done on the on the central uh, uh, scene so I, I find that quite useful so how do you change between the components so literally with your um, the, the drawing hand if you flick your thumbstick left and right we've got edge mode point mode smart mode and just keep flicking through and you can see the change to the components so let's just go through the basic ones so point mode and then with the grip just pull around and it's exactly the same as normal gravity sketch and it allows us to pull the points around so you need the intersection of the the sphere to give you the interaction and that works um, as you would expect in normal gravity sketch so if you flick to let's just do face mode and it's exactly the same so you can grab a face for example here and move it around but if you hold both your inner both your grips and pull in and out it just scales that one component so that in itself is quite useful so if I scale it to there and let's just go to edge mode so flick again and now you can see the edge mode and I'm turning the edges remember snap to the zero across X so that's not affecting that so let's get more polygons and just see what happens so we could just try subdivision level one and see what that does and moving moving things around you can see that's just like normal subdivision so that's the control cage um, and you can see as as with any of our any of this kind of modeling what you want to do is get your shape right in a very very low polygon so maybe not even use that yet just literally start with it as a cube so let's try and let's just do some extrusion so let's go to face mode and then to extrude we would just fire with the trigger and move and if you want to fire or scale while you're doing it you can come out like that and that gives us um, obviously the ability to pull it out it's like a whether you call it an extrude or a smooth shift or in ZBrush it's called um, a Q mesh um, and then let's go back and now tweak that in point mode and it's very simple at this level it's very very simple because you're not getting an, an overlap if you were on a very small object you can see the size of this sphere matters because that's what you're selecting so it's getting into the habit of scaling things up and down and making sure you're getting the selection correct so what if we want more polygons uh, in a in a loop in a split so if we go back to edge mode just with flicking and then where we want the split if you hover the top sphere over the split you can do it there like that so if I wanted it over on this side it would be just placed there which we don't we just wanted it there and then go to you can move it point by point and obviously the what you wouldn't want to do is have to move it point by point all the time because that's quite labor intensive so before we show you a different way of doing that let's just go back to edge mode and let's run a split that way then back to point mode you see how quick it is flipping through <clears throat> now go back to subdivision for a moment just to see because I'm, I'm going to make some kind of a head with bulgy eyes at the side here so moving it around like so and now I want to smooth this down or maybe tighten it uh, maybe I'll put a split through here first 
So edge mode, put the split through here, back to point mode. Make sure it's right in the center. This will be the front, let's say it's like an ant kind of creature or something like that. We'll put mandibles out the front here. So if we want to now tighten it here, if we go zoom out, make the sphere larger, and then push forward with the thumbstick and pull back with the thumbstick, one would push it one way and one would tighten it down. So the one that we want is the tightening down. So stay in point mode, grab the area that you want. That is an, a soft selection as well. So if you make it bigger and larger, you can see how it's affecting the area. And then grab the area that you want and pull down and it gives you a tightening effect. And that's rounding it as you go. You can see it's smoothing it down. And it's a smooth without affecting the geometry, which is what we want. Um, average vertices is what it's called in some programs. So that's given us the, sh the kind of shape that we want. You l like with um, all of the other uh, gravity sketch uh, options, what we can do is change color, for example. So we can just go to, let's just make it a bluey, grayish color. There we go. And then back in again to the, with the blue, blue button back into the, the, the working mode. So let's now add some more, uh, well, tighter splits really. So let's go in to edge mode again, and zoom right in, and we'll put a couple of splits really tight in this corner here, like so. We'll stay in point mode actually. And then what we'll do is just tighten this down. Because subdivision's on, you can see now if I pull, I can go to another subdivision level and have a look at it. I tend not to push it too far yet. Obviously it's a very early working uh, version, so I haven't really pushed it too far yet. Um, so I generally keep it at that, sub, well, that one subdivision level, certainly while I'm refining the area like this. But now, because I'm still very few polygons, I can still do big sweeping changes and keep doing that tightening if I feel like I need to. So that's working quite well. I might actually put a, a bit of a, maybe a bit more detail on the back of the head. And again, because of the way this generally works, you want to do as much as you can, as low as you can. So edge mode, put another split there through the middle. Lost a bit of volume there, so I'm going to put that on this where the eye comes off. I want it round here like this, and then we'll put more detail in there in a moment. So that's that's looking good. I actually want to change the lighting a little, little bit there. So I'm just going to go to settings, and I'm actually going to go for a, a, a darker room now, which I quite like. And we'll mess around with the lighting a little bit. So we get a lighting scenario that we like. Maybe light it from the back a little bit more. There we go. It shows it a little bit more how I want it. Does that look like different rooms? That's a custom one, which we don't really want. So let's just go back to black. What I do do a lot um, is quite often I'll just go to, uh, go back to settings. Uh, in fact, now let's go to the main screen and go to camera. And quite often I'll just take a picture and that'll save it. Um, and that's now available to me as a, let's just put it there. That's available to me as a reference image should I need it. So as I go along, I might be taking these pictures um, and you can turn the UI off and you can make the transparent background transparent, etc. You can see me and just clicking them there. Whenever it stops and freezes, that means it's it's it's, it's um, added the photograph to the folder, and then I can use those at a later date. Should I need them as textures, or should I need them as um, reference images? So you can see some of the earlier ones that I've been working on here. So um, 
I can actually bring those out and use them, but I don't particularly need it for this because I'm just spitballing to, to learn the tools. So let's pick the model up again and we can start working on a little bit more detail. So what we could do is we could do a separate um, model and do an antennae, but what I want to do is just show you how we would do an extrude and just work. So face mode again, make sure we're zoomed right in. Just take this one face here, fire and make that face small. Point mode, bring it into a square. Edge mode, sorry, face mode. And just fire it, but only give myself one basically, so that it gives me a protective loop there. And now come right out, do two there, make this larger, fire, fire, smaller, fire, and then move this along. And we can move out, and you can see already what I'm doing it's, it's, it's the antenna, and then a bit larger, fire, 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 larger. And then what I'll do is I'll turn that around and then larger, fire, fire, and smaller, fire, there you go. And now point mode, in fact you can do it in point or face mode, it doesn't really matter with a, a lot of these. And say you want to now just smooth that, be in point mode, surround it all, and just pull down with the thumbstick and that tightens it down. And it might be, oops, grab the whole thing. It might be that I want to shrink the whole thing down and move it back a little bit because it's not quite posed right. So that's quite useful. Or I could go all the way up here, grab the whole thing. So I'm finding that with a combination of the smoothing and tightening and the, and the, the ability to do this, quite useful. Actually, let's make it a red ant. I don't know why I've done it as a, a blue ant. It's kind of irrelevant, really. But let's, and let's make it a different material as well. We'll make it red. That's too dark. Pick the right sort of colour for this. sort of slightly glossy feel to it okay so that's working but you can see some of the volume lost here actually so still while we're quite low poly we'll go in and put that volume back because the more you subdivide it you just that's just going to accentuate how bad that volume loss is there if you went back to completely low poly then you'd be able to see this a lot a lot easier Now the one set of tools that there aren't, there aren't in here yet that is, is really, for me, would be the next essential set of tools is the ability to cut and re-turn um, the geometry into a position that I want. Because what we don't want to do is keep adding split loops. Obviously that wouldn't be effective um, as a modeling tool. So at the moment it doesn't have that, but that must be high on the, on the priority, obviously. Um, Let's just put a mouth of some kind in here. So we'll put a loop. Let's put another split in here. And then we'll do another split here. Make sure you get it in. And then probably just take these two here. Make sure I'm in face mode. Fire those out there. And then I'll come and play with them in point mode so go back now and tweak these see how it came to the center there I probably don't want that to happen 
don't want to go so close to the center that these other points start snapping so i'll keep them away from that let's have a look what it looks like with another subdivision iteration so not far off there now looks good and i'll put a split around here to give it a more defined or like basically a, a tight um, seam there and then bring that one over the back so it gives me that tightened edge because I've put it in tune mode there you can see that the edge is starting to pop as well which in this scenario kind of helps but that could be a pain you might not want that and um, you can see as it turns and covers the edge like that it gives it it gives it a, a rendered edge To just don't go close enough to snap like I keep doing there because you have to just keep ending up pulling it back okay so that's given us pretty much the shape we want so let's work out some body for him um, obviously you can combine um, you could sketch out the body now so um, what we do in normal gravity sketch, in fact, I'll do it in this little sequence. So if we go back, um, I'm gonna have to put that back on for this bit because I just want to do some sketching. Make a new layer, lock the old layer, make it a bit transparent for now. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of sketching just to lay out a bit more of this body. So what tool do we use? Um, we can just use ink, put mirror on. So settings and mirror this is normal gravity sketch now with the mirror plane on and whatever i do now is just sketching it's just lying down where i want to go with the rest of this this character so obviously it's an ant so it's going to have a couple of limbs um well it depends which version of an ant you want to do but it'll need an abdomen which will be another sub d object something like that and then if i've done an arm here and an arm here I probably need that means I can just do two here and I want spikes on those legs and a nice ant like spiky foot and then probably spikes on there which we could do in when the old gravity sketch um, but this will be nice to to have a go in uh, in sub D and we'll put a big chest on him well maybe not like that maybe like this sort of volume here so you can see there what I'm going for and maybe this one I don't know has got wings maybe this is a flying ant something like that leave that a bit a bit more complex so let's go that's just laying out like we do with normal gravity sketch make that almost transparent back to this layer we'll lock that other layer actually and now we'll unlock this one this is going to be called head spelled correctly they're only temporary names for now cool and now what we'll do is we'll start a another sub d object so the color snap it to the center and then just start thinking about where I want to do some splitting so that's given me the rib cage make sure it's attached to the back face mode edge mode split that way split that way split that way for now I'll do another one and I want it there and maybe one there and then huge tightening so I'm just selecting them all and then pulling down on the, the joystick and that's giving me the ability to now just do big sweeping statements big sweeping moves and then keep tightening them down something's gone wrong here so let's have a look at what's 
<coughs> excuse me. Let's have a look what's happening in here. One subdivision up so I can have a look at it. Oh, that's not snap, that's right. If that's going to be the ribs, we're almost there. We'll come up for the neck there. Big shoulders on him here. So they're all fine. Got enough polygons to play with there. And there. Well, that's good. So we can take these one, two, three, four here. Face mode. Let's see what I did there. So I just grabbed those faces and just pulled them down and fired with the trigger. And that allowed me to just do those extrusions on the fly, as you've seen me do. And that's given us enough to go down here. I want some kind of definition in that. Ab oh, 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 it's, it's kind of a combination of an insect's thorax and a, and a chest cavity, so it's a bit, it's a bit mix of both, really. And there might not be enough polygons to be able to do what I want there, so I well, might have to add more. But no, that seems to be working. Add some more splits in here just to help me. That's good. That's working fine. Face mode. Remember how we did the antennae, but we're going to do it on a seam here. So let's just see how this works. So we'll take that, fire and shrink down, fire and shrink down. That didn't look right to me. No, nope, thought it wasn't. So we'll go back, take it. What I'll do is I'll go to point mode first before I do that move and we'll get this shape right. for the neck because it's way too wide there we go that's better now and then take that face and think about it from the front almost not quite but now we can just use Let's just go to point mode and we'll just drag it around now until we get it quite right. Maybe even scale it back up a bit inside. There. How does that look? Almost. Let's have a look at it from a distance. Yep, that looks fine. So, same with the shoulders. So, back to point mode. Grab the faces, face mode. Let's bring the shoulder off a little bit. Mm -hmm. 